Movie Club Strikes Back, it's me Jenny and this is a belated review for Nina, uh, Vlog 19, Life Nina, um, links on screen, she's delightful and she chose Bottle Shock, um, I'm not sure for what week, I'm very behind but it's in the title, which is down here I think um, and I am out of practice as you can probably tell by the fumbling um, but my quick review for Bottle Shock is I have very mixed feelings about this film um, if I'm going from the stuff that I really enjoyed Probably my favourite thing about this is the directorial feel. It's a beautiful film to look at. The music works very well, particularly in terms of how they handle the music and the shots, where there's a lot of very good musical synergy with what's happening on camera, particularly with the crane shots and the helicopter shots over this landscape. Um, this film truly makes you want to go and visit California and do wine tasting if you are of legal age. It, just makes you want to be there. It's beautiful, it's very... It, it's kind of like the perfect pristine version of what you want um, California um, grape growing country to be like. Um, and it was beautiful um, and it made me want a glass of wine in a good way. Um, that being said, I have very mixed feelings about the story. Um, one of the great strengths of this film and perhaps one of the things that I got a disconnect for being English is the fact that this film is a very quintessential um, American dream story. Uh, the main character, well I suppose maybe the main character, it depends on how you perceive this film, um, Jim Bar Barnett? Barrett? Jim Barrett, um, played by Bill Pullman, um, does a really good job as this very um, hard-working man who has had a dull job and then decides to go for his dream and do the really hard thing and from the dirt roots, work his way up as an underdog character throughout the entire film pretty much, he's the underdog, um, and then comes out on top. And it's a very beautiful heroic sort of journey, um, and it's very much the American dream. Um, that being said, I just felt like there was a lot of unnecessary drama in places, and unnecessary um, just dick moves, <laughs> um, particularly Chris Pine's character is meant to be the dick character. He's meant to be an unpleasant young man who is spoiled and um, lazy and has the hero's journey to become less of a dick. Um, which meant that for the majority of this film he is not a particularly nice person to have on camera. Um, and you understand that, that that's his character progression and he really does have that progression because everything does work out in the end but sometimes it felt like almost um, when you get to the end that his rewards don't justify his effort, unlike um, Bill Pullman's character who's definitely put in the work and, you know, the ends justify the means. Um, just generally, the main problem perhaps that I had with this was Alan Rickman's character. Um, I haven't really said it, but the acting throughout is really, really good for all of the actors. They do a really good job, but the characters they're given are sometimes a bit on the iffy side. Um, and Alan Rickman plays an unpleasant English person who's a snob and is rude and there is one particular scene where he says um, I'm not really you think I'm an idiot or you think I'm rude and I'm not really rude I'm just British and you don't get me which frankly as an English person I found a tad insulting because you can be English without being a rude snob um, and he's definitely a rude snob, although I have to say the visual metaphor of him eating the Kentucky Fried Chicken and being fully immersed in the American culture was a beautiful pinnacle of a visual moment. Um, and, you know, his acting throughout is very well handled as this very set-in-stone character, but I can't say that I particularly liked him. Um, again, with most of the characters on screen, I think probably the only character that I really enjoyed on screen every single time she arrived was Eliza Dusku's character, um, because you don't really have too much conflict with her, she's just this bartender person who's relatively chipper and relatively entertaining. Um, you didn't get any unnecessary drama with her, which you get with a lot of the other characters where it felt like it could just be solved with a conversation, but instead we've got to have a big argument, it's got to be fleshed out, and I just felt a bit drained at the end of this where I was like, oh, so the main character, uh, the, ra the main female in this who is played by Rachel Taylor? I think. Um, she 
comes in and she's an intern and Chris Pine takes an interest in her from the beginning and yet she shows no interest in him whatsoever um, and halfway through the film she, spoiler alert, um, gets with his friend who is played um, by Freddy Rodriguez, I think? Um, and she has sex with him and it's a consensual adult thing and Chris Pine, who she has shown no interest in, gets incredibly jealous, gets angry, drops off you know, all of those annoying things, and you're like, you know, these are two consenting adults, she's never shown any interest in you, just, if you were immature about it, then it would be fine. And then at the end, it's never really solved what her relationship is with Gustav. Um, it's never really explained how, like, they had sex, was it? Apparently it was just a fling thing, but it's never really concluded. And it just, I felt a little bit hollow at the end when there's the big romantic kiss between her and Chris Pine and it just didn't really feel like those characters ever really had that level of intimacy. Um, but there we go, that's just my interpretation. I'm sorry, Nina. Um, I'm sorry I've rambled on for way too long. I have no idea how long this video is. It's probably ridiculously long. I'm sorry I'm out of practice. I'm sorry this is not my favouritest film ever. Feel free to comment down below and tell me how much of a nincompoop I am and how much of an asshole English person I am. And, um... Hopefully I've said something useful and I'll see you guys all very soon. Bye guys.